The Leader of the Opposition has the call. Thanks, Madam Speaker. And, uh, my question is to the Prime Minister. I remind him of his broken promise to turn boats around, his decision to abolish the Pacific Solution and temporary protection visas, his asylum, his asylum freeze that led to the riots in our detention centres, his decision to grant visas to those who blew up Civ 36 and his bungling of the Oceanic Viking incident. And I ask, will the Prime Minister finally accept responsibility for the decisions that have led to illegal boat arrivals now running at over 3,000 every month. The Prime Minister has the call. Thank you very much. I thank the Leader of the Opposition for the question. Uh, it's worth noting that in the period of the Howard government there are about 250 boats, I think, arrive uh, on Australia's shores, of which the Howard government turned back four to Indonesia. Four. Secondly, uh, on the, before honourable members get too excited about this, let me just be um, uh, quite direct about this matter. Prior to the 2007 election, uh, I indicated that uh, we would um, seek to turn, turn boats back. As the Leader of the Opposition will be advised, if he is elected and Prime Minister, the, as Prime Minister of Australia, uh, the officials and the security agencies and the Australian Navy will advise him that that is simply not possible under current circumstances. And the reason for that is because the Indonesian government has made it absolutely plain on the public record. Can I just quote the Indonesian ambassador, who I understand recently has been a dinner companion of the member for Curtin, uh, when the Indonesian ambassador came out and said, I think it's not possible for the coalition to say that it has to go back to Indonesia because Indonesia is not the origin country of these people. No such collaboration will happen between Indonesia and Australia to bring back the people to Indonesia. Now, Last time I looked at diplomatic practice, ambassadors speak on behalf of their country. That is what the Indonesian ambassador said not years ago. He said on the 31st of May 2013. And so I'd say to the uh, leader of the opposition, if we are having a serious debate in this country about asylum seekers, then it should be a debate about policies which work as opposed to slogans which sound good. And that is what is important here because those opposite, those opposite know for a fact that the Indonesian ambassador and and through him the Indonesian government will not cooperate with the policy which he advocates. Of course, in the period ahead, I'll be taking briefings from the national Order. security uh, community about uh, what further can be done in this area. And I would suggest to the Leader of the Opposition, and this is a genuine invitation to him, if you want to engage in a real policy discussion and provide real policy solutions which could work on the high seas to deal with this problem confronting not just Australia but countries around the world, I would urge him to take a briefing from the Australian Security Intelligence Organisation, to take a briefing from ACES, to take a briefing from the Department of Immigration, the Department of Defence, the Australian Navy, the Department of Foreign Affairs. This is absolutely how proper policy making works. Facts are presented, alternative policies are produced, and then you get on with the business of implementing the policy. It's quite different to simply stand up and to use slogan and invective as if it's a, simply a substitute for policy. The easiest thing to do in this parliament is to stand up and to use invective. The hardest thing to do in this parliament is to put forward a policy plan which works for the nation. And there's still time for me to throw the member for Wallen out of the chamber. The member for Hindmarsh has the call. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Early Childhood and Child Care well, and apologies. Employment my Participation. My apologies. The member for Hindmarsh will resume his seat. I thought you were looking for a supplementary and you've used them up. The Leader of the Opposition. Ma Madam Speaker, would the Pri Prime Minister undertake to table the defence advice he referred to in his answer, claiming that the Navy can't the do now what they've the done before? The Leader of the Opposition will resume his seat. Was the, Prime Minister, was the Prime Minister reading from a document? No, I wasn't, um, uh, Speaker, because I have been briefed on these things many times before. I would say to the Leader of the Opposition, read the transcript of the advice from the Chief of Navy in Senate estimates, and on top of that, do what any other responsible alternative Prime Minister does and take briefings from the intelligence community, Prime from Minister, ASIS, from ASIO, the Minister, from the Defence Department and from the services? The Prime Minister, or is he frightened of facing the, the facts? The Prime Minister will resume his seat. There was no document. There is nothing. The member for Highmarsh has the call.